everybody, I am here with Ron Rayfield and I am Justine Dorn and we also have a third guest, really good food. I am so <laughs> excited to eat today, you don't even know because this is my kind of meal right here. Roast meat, roast vegetables, that's what I'm talking about. Can I show so, them? Yeah, show them. It's, the lid is still a little hot, Dutch oven holds on heat. Are you guys ready for this? <gasps> Look at that. <laughs> That's so good. And there's mm. there's about an inch of juice in there too. Oh, it smells like rosemary. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be good. Alright, so before we go any farther, go to the early American to watch yes. this being made. Yes. I forgot to say that in the last few episodes and people were like bleep bleep bleeping. Where are you where are you making this at? Where can I see it? Early American. Early American. Our other YouTube channel. <laughs> That's our main YouTube channel. Yes. Over there we cook it. And here we eat it. Here we eat it. Let's eat it. Please. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to carve this okay. bird up. Now people ask me, what is your... Oh, don't let me stop you. Oh. Please go ahead. People ask me, what is your favorite video that you've ever done? The videos where I do my own recipes, I think are my favorite videos because it allows me complete creative freedom. And it's the kind of food that I naturally want to eat. And sometimes with historical recipes, it's you and your luck, you know? That is hot. But just like with today, moms at home or housewives they would have cooked their own recipes it isn't necessarily like everything would have been from a receipt book back then but we've lost these recipes to time because they were never written down so i'm going to start a new series on my channel maybe put a video out once every month or so or every other month just justine's recipes my recipes using Ingredients that they would have had during this time period in this region, seasonal ingredients, things that were plausible, you I'll know, like that, that they could have made it, but it's going to be my recipe. And I'm still going to do the historic recipes too, but this is just kind of a new little side series. Because everybody keeps saying, oh, you should put out a uh, cookbook, but that takes a lot of work, so it's just... Right. I don't have an agent. The how, best do you, route, how do you even do that? <laughs> the best avenue for us is to just cook it on video for you. Maybe eventually I'll do a cookbook, but I don't know how to do that because you have to have an agent and whatnot, don't you? I'm not sure. I, I don't know if I don't have an agent. Look guys, this is sitting in an inch of this sauce. Mm, you're going to see a lot of that. I'm sorry. So if that grosses you out, there's other channels you can oh. watch. But I'm going to be... Oh! <laughs> okay, I want a little bit of that on a little oh. drizzle. Oh, yes! yes. <laughs> That's butter, that's chicken grease. That's uh, lemon, juice, and lemon juice and all the herbs and the secret spice blend, which isn't so secret. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. And it is so nice out, finally. Yes, finally it's fall. This is the first week of October. Mm -hmm. October is like our favorite month because it's our favorite holiday. Yes. Or I, one of our favorite oh, holidays. Oh, I love October. Halloween, that's what he's talking I about. I love Halloween, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and Christmas, mm. those are, they're right in a row. Where'd the lid go? Put the lid back okay. up so food stays warm. Didn't know if they'd want to watch it. That's warm, that's warm. Uh, this has been off of the fire <laughs> now for half an hour, uh, half maybe an 20 hour. minutes, and it's still warm, or verging on hut, because that's how they kept food warm back then. The cast iron held on to its heat. Right Would you then. like some cider? That's right, we also have apple cider. Can you tell we've really gotten into the spirit of October? <laughs> There's nothing wrong oh, with that. Oh man, this is going to be so good. Thank you. Mm. My turn or your turn to pray? Um, it is your turn. Alrighty. Mm. Lord, thank you for this beautiful meal that this beautiful woman made for me. And I just hope that everybody out there is uh, staying safe and uh, enjoying their life to, to the best of their potential. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, I'm Ron. Just, just swing that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. And then afterwards, I made an apple almond tart. And we're going to eat that after. I didn't film myself making this. This will be in a future Justine Cooks video. But it has apples and almonds in it. Apples are seasonal right now. We made them with the uh, leftover apples from last week's yes, video. Yes, we did. The minced pie. If you haven't watched that, go watch that and Ooh, and then make it and try it and let us know what, if you like it. It was really good. Yes. Super sweet. I loved it. All right, yeah, we ready? He ate the whole thing. One, Ooh. two, Ding. three.
Go! Potato time! Oh my gosh! I love old potatoes. Oh my gosh, that's good. It's got rosemary <clears throat> flavor all throughout it. <laughs> Look at the, the shine from that sauce on there. <laughs> yeah, that looks really good. You guys might be thinking, man, Justine's got some energy today. It's because I'm eating food that I genuinely like. The historical ones are really cool, but they're a mad science experiment. Let's face it, at the end of the day, this is exactly the kind of meal that I like. So I was super hyped up and excited for it. May I have a butter knife? Yes. Please. What do you need a butter knife for? To hold it, because oh. some people, including yourself, don't like Well, use your fingers. napkin. Oh yeah, that's right. I don't like touching my food. I know my... Look at that. Seem a little weird. But... It's so tender. Yeah, it's just falling apart. But it's so juicy. Mm -hmm. Not really hard to make either. No. One odd dish. Mm -hmm. Right. Not that many dishes. And if you're cooking with fire, these one pot dishes are the easiest way to start. Mm -hmm. Because you just put it over the fire, you put some coals under it and over it. You forget about it. You come back in 40 minutes. You put some new coals on top of it. Forget about it. Come back in 10, 15 minutes. Boom, it's done. Wow. <laughs> you make it sound so easy. It is easy. It's very good. This, you did a great job. Thank you. No, I'm not <laughs> just saying that. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> My kind of food. Everything's just amazing right now. Right. This is amazing. Life is amazing. Life. The the weather finally. Yeah, I'm very happy to be alive. Also, our condolences and thoughts with everybody down there in Florida mm -hmm. and down there in the Panhandle and everywhere down there where yep. they were affected with that. We have hurricane. had a lot of people come up from Florida. I've seen a lot of Florida license plates around here. Yes. On their horse and buggies. <clears throat> there was a, I mean, hurricanes have been around for, since the beginning of time. And mm -hmm. I'm sure, I have not researched this, but I'm sure that there are accounts of some really bad hurricanes even in our time period, if we go back and look at the records for that. Might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I hope Everybody is safe. Their family is safe. Yeah, I'm, I'm using the gravy spoon instead of a, another fork like I should. This chicken is <laughs> so good. See how easy it is falling apart? But I almost like the potatoes more. Just what? Be, I, just because the potatoes <laughs> soak everything up. Yeah, they did. <laughs> They're like little balls of chicky juice and lemon juice and butter. <laughs> Mm. But just explode in your mouth when you bite them. Yeah, it's really good. Mm -mm -mm. So maybe you might notice something different about me. What about me looks different? It's a physical thing. You got something on your face? I might. You might want to wipe it off with your... I might, but that's not it. There's something else that's physically different about me. They know mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do. Mm. What could it be? I don't know. Whatever it could be. I got engaged, guys. Engaged to who? I did. You probably know him. It's you, silly. I got engaged to you. Now we're hooked for life. <laughs> so what happened is when we finally bought land that we were going to start building our forever homestead on. By the way, we got land. By the way, we got land. In case we forgot to mention it. I was, yeah, okay, so... Oh, it's a little overwhelming right now. I'll talk about it after that. But we had this understanding, Ron told me, that once we get land to build our forever house on, because this is a temporary little cabin, then Ron is going to engage to me. And we're going to be engaged. So we were looking for land. I was frantically looking for land. And we found 34 acres. Finally... The day after, it was the day after. Oh yeah, it was the day, the day after, after birthday. my birthday. Sorry, so much has happened mm -hmm. in the last two weeks. <laughs> right. My birthday is September 21st, so it passed a little bit back. It's early October when this video was being filmed. And so I didn't find out that we were closing on the land until the day before we closed on the land. But 
Ron knew that we were closing on the land by the time he came over uh, to with my parents' house to help celebrate my birthday, so he proposed to me. And I was already decided, like <laughs> a year ago from now. <clears throat> Six months into our relationship, because I went into it, you know, I'm looking for a woman for forever. I ain't around to play games. <laughs> I and mean, that's what she was looking for too. And so we knew, yes. <laughs> but we just waited for a good time. This was a good time. It challenged us to find land first and get that done because what's the saying? You should have the coat before you get the button. But we've well, got so many buttons, but we don't have the coats to certain yeah. things. So we wanted to try to. My mom is always saying that she's like, you have the button before you have the coat. So I would have all this. I collect like furniture for our future house. I don't even have a house yet. <laughs> so our next step is to build a house and, and then, get the coat and then have the wedding. We don't have a date yet. Our wedding is going to be when our house is moving ready. And we the the property right now it's just raw land. <laughs> the only thing that we've done to it is we a road has been cut into like in the trees of the some of the trees have been cut down so you could drive in there. Path. Yeah, path has been cut through, so that's it. So it's gonna be a little bit far off from now. Realistically, it might take a year to build a house, seriously. Um, it's not gonna be like this, where it's just a little tiny two room cabin. <laughs> it's gonna be a house house, but it's going to be historical. An early American house. Yeah, it's gonna be an early American four room style house. Like the, Two the square style houses. Yeah. Brick chimney on each end. Right. And we're going to build it completely by ourselves. But it's going to have a cellar. And it's going to have a summer kitchen. And we are officially broke. Yep. Because we put all our money into the land. But we're debt free. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're trying to do this completely <laughs> debt free. 100% debt free. So that's part of why it's also going to take some extra time because every month we'll put a little bit more into it. Then we got to take a break um, and save up more money and you know, so on and so forth. But we're going to use a lot of the trees that are on the property to build the house mm -hmm. and do everything ourselves. And yes, we will try to film some of it. I don't know realistically how much we can film. We will make a video out of it, but we can't film every single step. Because what we're doing is very dangerous, you know, like hauling those huge, gigantic pine trees. And That's so we, one. yeah, we really have to pay attention to what we're doing. Um, we can't be fiddling around with a, with a camera or anything because you could potentially get really hurt really building dead. a house. Really, really, quick. really dead, really quick. And it takes a lot more time to do that. Stop and start. And when you're right. doing something like that, you just want to. You need to focus. Yeah, you, you want to keep the going. Zone. But we are going to film some of it. Yeah. Just yeah. not every little day that we're out there. <laughs> we're we're going to build a, um, a summer kitchen separate from the house. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's something we can uh, try to really hone in on, on the film. Yeah, we'll film that. It's, it's a little smaller project. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, that'd be a lot easier than trying to the whole house. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going so. back for more. Nice. I'm glad you like it. Oh, I love it. Mm, I'm hungry. It's really good. Potatoes are just very filling. So I'm already getting full. Oh, no. No, come back. No. <laughs> Thought you could escape, could you? <laughs> so when Ron proposed, proposed to me, he gave me my ring in this box. I this painted is that. his ring box. He <laughs> painted this. So that's a shaker box. And uh, <clears throat> it was just green. And then candy store. And I thought, you know what? That <laughs> looks uh, like a good idea. I was like, I want to paint something for Justine, make it special. It's give her, us. Give her her ring in. And uh, candy had some templates or stencils, whatever you'd like to call them, or patterns. And a, inside of a book. And so I found what I like, and I traced it out with some carbon paper, and then I just went, took my time, took me like two hours to paint that. Wow. Because <laughs> I'm not a painter, but I, I'm happy with the way it turned out. It's so sweet. 
So the ring was inside that box. Yeah, because I mean, the little things they get you from the jewelry store, those aren't special. Nobody cares about that. They usually don't keep those boxes. They just no. keep the ring. <laughs> I actually threw the one away that that ring came in. Oh. <laughs> So you might be wondering why am I not wearing this for the cooking videos? It's because this ring is not technically period correct. It's a modernish kind of ring. It's too small. Too small. Didn't no. they have big gaudy rings back then? If you were rich. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I mean, it's the it's same. It's too day. big. It's too big. It's too big. The diamond's too big. To me, it just look. It looks like it wouldn't really fit in eighteen twenty. I still love it, but I'm gonna take it off for the cooking videos because it's not like. It don't scream Perry correct to me. What and would what would one look like back then? Probably just a, si a single gold band. With no stone on it? If you were rich, it would have had a stone. Okay. Or a gold band that has words written on it. Those were pretty common. Interesting. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm, but I don't, I don't normally wear jewelry. I'm not a jewelry person at all. Ron knows that. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to get me something simple. Something petite. Petite. And simple. And I really, really appreciate that. The, the lady at the jewelry store was like trying to use car salesman in me. She's like, oh, this is the <laughs> one you want. It's got all the bling and bells and whistles. It's like, no, that's not Justine. And she's like, yeah, but this is what all the women are liking right now. Like, yeah, but that's not Justine. <laughs> I don't like jewelry. But the, the funny part was, I was like, I need a ring that's going to fit just this far on my pinky. And she, he just looked at me like, are you sure about that? I was like, I'm positive. <laughs> Trust me. And uh, I have very small hands. <laughs> yeah, show your pinky or your uh, ring finger to my pinky, or that works too. Yeah, look, see how small those are. I have basically hands. child hands. But this is <laughs> about the same size as her ring finger. They serve its purpose though. And it fits good, doesn't it? Put your hand up. Let me compare. Uh, maybe your other hand. Sideways. Uh, let's do this. Oh, oh, like that. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait, show them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's quite a bit there, of gap here. There we go. <laughs> there you go. You see, there's quite a bit of a gap. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> ah, ah. I can't bend that way. <laughs> <laughs> I have really tiny, tiny hands. <laughs> so, I'm engaged. We have land. And our wedding, whenever we do have the wedding, once the house is move-in ready, it won't be done done, mm -hmm. but we want it to be move-in ready, you know, have a roof, have a floor. <laughs> yeah, so once walls. Walls. Door. A door. We don't want huge gaping holes in the middle of winter. So once it's move-in ready, we will have the wedding. Because we will be able to officially move in together. Because we're kind of old-fashioned people. We don't want to get married until we can move in together right. properly. It's going to be a public wedding. So yep. you guys can come. Yep. You are invited. <clears throat> and you better come. Or I'll take it personal. No date yet, but it will be in Missouri. Yeah, it'll be in, yeah, it'll it'll be in, in Missouri. It will most likely be in St. John County. It will be in Missouri. And it will definitely be in the United States of America. Yeah. And on planet Earth. There's a small chance it might be at Fort Duchard. Oh, yeah, yeah. It might be at Fort Duchard. We don't know yet if they'll let us do a wedding there. But that's not far. Yeah, Fort Duchard is kind of in the area. We've, we've talked about that. It's an 18th here. century fort. Yeah, big place. <laughs> mm hmm Well. So, please come to our wedding. <laughs> so, we have an event coming up on October 15th. Mm-hmm. I believe that's a Saturday. It's on a Saturday. <clears throat> it's the werewolf event here in St. Genevieve. Or the loot guru. Or the beast of Genevada. I, I said that wrong, <laughs> but you, you can read the title at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, October is the best month of the year because, well, among other things, Halloween is in it. Oh man, my inner morbid child is coming out. I love it. So we take part in this werewolf event every single October. So there's a werewolf hunt. In French culture, our heritage culture, uh, they believe in werewolves. You know, some people believed in the vampire thing. Some people believed in, yeah. you know, ghosts this or is a witches. French town. But werewolves was their thing. So that's what we do. I get to be the wolf. I was the wolf last year. <laughs> <clears throat> it's pretty fun. So what they do is, throughout the day, there's werewolf sightings and stuff, and a lot of howling going on. 
And when it gets dark, or right before dark, they uh, they ring the bell and they muster the uh, the militia. The militia yeah. comes up and they start to go on the hunt for the werewolf. Yes. And some of the guys get eaten sometimes and turned in, or bit and turned into a werewolf. Mm -hmm. So there might be three werewolves at one time. Mm -hmm. And there's, what would you say, like, a couple hundred people were following you around last year yeah. with lanterns looking for <clears throat> for me and the other wolves and stuff. When we find them, they, they rope us up and they drag us back to where the townspeople are. Don't spoil the ending. Well, I gotta... <laughs> they shoot you with a silver bullet and you turn back into a man. Okay. <laughs> but... Anyways, so, it's fun. There, there's games. There's uh, complimentary food, like like snacks and stuff. Mm -hmm. I believe it's hot chocolate and cider, uh, and, and stuff for s'mores. And there's lots of tiki torches everywhere, and pitchforks <laughs> and bonfires, and a and lot of gunshots. <clears throat> a lot of gunshots. Yeah, they shoot the guns at Ron maybe half a dozen times and until they finally get them. And it's right downtown in St. Genevieve in the historical district. So if you mm -hmm. they you have to buy a ticket. Mm. You can buy tickets at the Center for French Colonial Life. That's the museum that we work at <laughs> sometimes. And if you have small children and would like to go to something like this, they're doing a kid-friendly one on Friday night. That's there's not many gunshots, and the werewolf is supposed to, is not supposed to be as scary. I'm not sure who's doing it, but it's not me. Oh. But Saturday is the main event yeah. where there's you know pew pew pew. And oh. roar. So Friday is the kid-friendly version. Yeah. Saturday is the version that we shoot Ron tremendously many times. Yes, and I tear people apart with my bare yeah. hands. So there's no stage for this. You might be wondering, what is it, a play? Oh no. no it's... It, it's, it happens in downtown St. Jen. We literally just roam around the streets with yeah. like 50 people walking behind me, and we're all in period clothes, um, at least the actors are. You can show up in whatever. Yeah. And I'll be holding a lantern and we'll walk around town in the middle of the night looking in houses and in alleys and stuff looking for the werewolf and Ron will just randomly jump out at random times and he'll last year he jumped off of a house it was, it I hurt was my climb that, that tree hurt. that hurt my feet yeah I so last year was my first year being the werewolf and I took it to the next level <laughs> I was like you know what all these past years I've been in the militia and they, they just picked some random person to do it, and they're just like, rawr, rawr. <laughs> and I was like, come on, dude, do something. And they're just like, rawr. So I said, you know what? Let me do it. So I did it, and I was And. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but more of a, ow, you know, how Yeah. But I was jumping out of stuff. I was running. I took a couple of the militia members to the ground. They tried roping me, and I said, I'm going to give you all I got now. And I can only see so much out of that mask. And all I, I turn my head and and all I see is like two guys <laughs> falling over and they got me roped up and I'm yeah. just giving them everything I got. And we turned it in kind of a, into a love story situation. Yeah, because we, didn't, we don't have a script or anything. Yeah, there's no was... script. So Justine was looking for me. Where's I was that? turned into a werewolf and I at? wanted to get back to her somehow. I find you and I like grab kidnap you and me. run away he with you. Kidnap me. And and all the poor people mm. that were following me, they were like, "Oh my gosh!" Yeah. So we 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 just go crazy with it. Yeah. Although I did have a breathing problem last year. When you're in that mask, <laughs> it's really hard to breathe because it's just a big rubber like plat. If you've ever worn like a Halloween mask, <laughs> there's no. It's yeah. not a mask. He really is a werewolf. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> I almost passed out actually. I I uh. I, I let them knock me out. I said, knock me out. So they hit me with the gun stock and I went down. I was like, man, I just need a second to breathe before we get up and start going again because I'm about to pass out in here because I can't breathe. He was on the ground tearing the grass up and they were shooting him. And yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, it was, it's, pretty, it's pretty intense. You know, there's no, it's not limited to one particular area. It's all downtown St. Yeah, it's, Jen. The, it's like the, the historic square. Down right, there. yep. So... And, uh, Come on by! <laughs> yeah, I couldn't talk for three days after that. My voice was voice. shot. <laughs> and if you if you can't make it to that, there's another great event, and that is on uh, October 22nd. That's also a Saturday. It is the Deja Vu. It's in the graveyard. So St. Genevieve has one of the oldest graveyards in Missouri. It's from the 18th century. And there's still people being buried there today, but there's significant people buried there. And... Uh, you know, we, we pick off the list who we want to interpret it. Mm -hmm. 
So we'll go there after dark and we have lanterns and little bonfires and stuff. And the visitors will come through and learn about that person's gravestone that we're standing next to. So it can be anything that it's not just 18th century. It's not just 19th. I think there's some early uh, 20th century people that they reenact and a lot of civil wars, lots of war guys there hmm. and uh, some colonial stuff. But uh, it's a great time. Yeah, October is a great time for reenacting. Especially in St. John, it's fun. Yes, it's very fun around here. Because people around here, they have a nice, morbid <laughs> personality. You know, the good kind of morbid. We like our Halloween. We like our Halloween around here. <clears throat> and we'll make a Halloween video. We'll make a more fall-themed food dishes on Early American, too. Mm -hmm. I'm full. You're full. I'm full. We got half a chicken left and you got part you didn't need all the chicken yet. The potatoes I, I had maybe like six potatoes. Mm. You gotta eat the whole thing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you wanna tell them about our public service announcement? Or should I do it? I don't even know what you're talking about, so <laughs> He's a man of mystery. I'll just do it then. <laughs> what is it? What could it possibly be? <clears throat> okay. Lately, there have been scammers on YouTube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fake accounts. Now, I'm not getting on to you, but this is 2022. Mm. Y'all should know by now yeah. a fake account from the real thing or yeah. you want a free cruise, don't click on it. Please don't, because what happens is when you reply to those people it and you give them. them money, they come back because they think, oh, there's easy pickings in this part of the internet. Now, they've been making new accounts that say early American and they'll say another word like Tele follow me. Telegram. At so and so or mm -hmm. a lot. For some reason, the word telegram is on a lot of them. Yeah. Or, but anything. We are the only early American and the only Frontier Patriot channels. Right. That's all our name says. So if the name says anything other than that, it is not us, even if it has the same picture. If you yeah. click on their uh, profile, they have no subscribers, they have no videos, no nothing. It's a false, it's a fake, it's, not it's us. a scam. Their channel was made so, two days ago. It's just a fake pop up channel. I almost don't feel sorry for some people that keep clicking on us. Like I said, it's 2022. Everybody knows by now. Don't mm. click on it. You didn't win a free cruise. Don't give anybody over the internet yeah. money like that. It's, but it, it yeah. just gets annoying. But so oh. if you see these people, please report it. It helps get rid of them faster. We try to catch it as fast as right. we can, but I can't sit there at the computer all day long monitoring right. everything. But they'll go through and I, I don't know how they do it. They'll respond to a hundred people and they'll just keep going and yeah. going. And it, it's it, terrible. What they'll do is um, so I'll put out a video and they'll reply to people's comments. So you leave a regular comment like, oh, nice video, or oh, your video sucks. It don't matter. What they do is they copy and paste the same comment that says, hey, you have won a cruise, or hey, contact me at this phone number and you've won yeah. something. And so they, they just go down, they scroll down, they reply to every single person's comment with this insanity. And they're hoping that maybe out of 20 comments that they do, there'll be one person who will fall for it and who will call the number. And even if that's all that happens, like one person does it, they keep coming back. Mm -hmm. So we, I have personally deleted somewhere around a little under 20 of these fake accounts in the last two months that have been doing this. And it's just been a complete nightmare because YouTube isn't helping us at all. Yeah, and there's been other people complaining about it too. Yeah. Yeah, I've had um, other YouTubers are, are going through this. It's some weird Telegram scam that's been going around the last few months. Mm -hmm. So um, if you get a strange comment, and honestly, come on, it's strange. You get a reply to your comment, and it says, you've won, click this link. Yeah. Come on, yeah. I, of course we're not going to say something like that, you know? But it's always going to say their name. And it might say Early American on it, but if you look at the whole thing, Early American and say it's got a big space, it's going to say something else on it. It's, it's gonna, not us. Yeah, their username is going to be something like early American-5432, telegram me at 664, whatever, you know, yeah. it's not us. It's a totally, it's a totally different fake person. And I know that they're operating somewhere out of Africa because one of the, really? one of the fake accounts, I think 
it was one of the scammers' personal account, and he forgot to delete some of the videos. And it had, like, videos of the guys in it, and they were teenagers? It looked like they were very, very young. They were speaking African? They, well, they were speaking an African language. Africa has a lot of languages. Mm. And Africa's made, it's a continent, it's made up of many, many different countries, right. like Europe. But I know it was an African language, I just don't know exactly what language, you know, unfortunately. I wish I knew every language in the world, but... And sometimes even one country will have three different languages in it. Yeah, look at America. <laughs> yeah, look at America. Look at Germany, you know, look at anywhere. Look at China. China, they speak all, all sorts of different languages and dialects, so... I don't know exactly what language it was, but it looked like they were either late in their late teens or early 20s. They're definitely not in this country. They're not in the United States. Just from the what the background of the video looked like too, the terrain. How did lions? I don't know. <laughs> lions and rhinos. Giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Had the rains down in Africa. <laughs> Ron, wipe your fingers. You, you're I'm, eating I'm like I'm trying a to. Werewolf. I was laughing. <laughs> but yeah, so these. You know, unfortunately, because they're not in the country, these guys will never be brought to justice. The law, it's just, it's out of their zone, you know, it's yep. not in the U.S. So please just do not give them your money. If you give them your money, they'll keep coming back. Yes. They've been doing it on my channel, they've been doing it on Ron's channel, they've been doing it on many, many YouTubers' channels, unfortunately. Don't be a victim. Yeah, please do not be a victim. Don't fall for it. We have never done a uh, call me. I've, I've never given out my private number or phone number publicly, okay? We're out of potatoes. Man, there are a lot of potatoes in there. There wasn't enough, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Next time I'll put more in there. <laughs> yeah, the potatoes are really good. <laughs> so anyways, just be yeah. smart about it. Yes, please. Because we have to work together. Because we're doing our part. We're reporting all these channels. And it's been a nightmare because we have to manually delete all these comments. Um, we also block them, but yeah. they'll leave like 30 comments before we catch them. Um, and we have these keywords set up in YouTube so it blocks certain words, but they use different words every single time. Like every single fake account, they have a different thing that they say. They're smart. Yeah, they are pretty smart. So we're doing our part the best we can do. So now you guys have to do your part. Please, please do not fall for these scams. And then you will choke them. You will starve them. They will run out of money. They will get bored and leave us alone. And die! Maybe. I don't know. I'm ready for some pie. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to dessert. Moving on to the sweet course. The sweet course. Yes. Okay, let me remove the chicken from the table. And thank you guys for listening to our public service. Yes. You know, we've actually been secretly, not so secretly, dealing with this issue for the last three months. Um, but we have to say it now because I had uh, one person who messaged me saying that they fell victim for the scam. Yeah. I didn't realize that people were actually falling for it. And that just infuriated me that people were giving their hard-earned money to these mosquitoes. I mean, even if you're an elderly person, you can't use that as an excuse because 20 years ago they were doing this and you were a young person then. So... I don't know. I mean, some people, they have dementia and things like that. Yeah, well, um... But, we, yeah, we, anyways. we don't... We've never given out our private phone number to 50 million people. <laughs> you know, we would never do that. No. Okay, so we have an apple and um, almond tart. I made it yesterday, <laughs> so let's try it. I'm so excited to try this. Oh, we're just gonna dig in. All right. You want a plate? Not really. Okay. <laughs> Wait, I have. That's more dishes I gotta do. That's right. I have a knife. Let's be a little proper. We. Oh yeah, we did read that book last week. Yeah, about manners. I don't remember any of it though. <laughs> As you can see, both elbows are on the table. Our, our last video was about how to have table manners according to the 18th century. Okay, I'll put it, oh, is your napkin soiled? No. Okay, I'll put it on your napkin. <clears throat> That's a small piece. <laughs> you can come back for more, silly. Oh. 
<laughs> Not bad. Not bad, he says. Not bad. <laughs> but does that mean it's good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> it pairs really nice with the cider. Oh yeah. Yep, we're drinking apple cider. Hmm. Well. I like it. That's really nice. <laughs> I like dessert the next day. It sets up. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I like anything almond flavored. Yeah, that's good. The almonds give a good <laughs> crunch. And he goes in for more. <laughs> The man's a bottomless pit. He's a funnel. Watch him eat at the circus. Hey. People line up to watch this guy eat. <laughs> well, look, they're watching you eat now. Hmm. <laughs> 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 I like it. <laughs> it's good. It's yeah, kind it's of creamy, good. actually. It is. <clears throat> there was one other thing I had to say back that what it was. Well, how about we talk to them about our land? Okay. Well, we got some land, as he said earlier. <laughs> it's got trees on it. It's made of dirt. <laughs> it's got a thousand foot of stream running yeah. through it. Yes, it has a thousand foot of stream. It's a constantly flowing stream. With lots of boulders. With a lot of boulders. And um, out of 34 <laughs> acres, there's maybe three acres that's already cleared of trees. Yeah, it's a pasture. Mm-hmm. Nothing has ever been built on it. Virgin land. Yeah, we don't have to worry about there being a Old. trash pit under it from the 1970s mm -hmm. or something. No, yeah, like abandoned septic tank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just used in the past for uh, horses and it was used for hunting. So it's virgin land. The lady that sold it to us, we already met her. Her and her husband are really, really nice people. And they have a whole bunch of horses. So that's what they were using the open part for. <clears throat> the pine trees on there are beautiful there. Mm -hmm. This big room. Yeah. <clears throat> and, I mean, that's how they got those really beautiful wide floorboards you see in these old homes mm. uh, back in the uh, 19th and 18th centuries, you know. You can't buy wood plates this this wide. Not easily, at least. For uh, for flooring, you you have to salvage them out of barns and old houses, and because uh, yeah, they just don't sell it. And if they did, it'd be extremely expensive. Yeah. But not putting any of that fake junk in our house. Mm -hmm. No vinyl, no melamine, no MSD or. No anthrax. No. Darn. <laughs> or MDF, sorry. You get all these acronyms mixed up. <gasps> yeah. I have so many plans for our, the future of this channel. Oh my gosh. Once we get the house built and the garden put in, I'm going to show so many more outside shots of us farming the land like they would have in the early 19th century. We need more work for me. No, I'll do most of it. Well, I'm doing it again. The camera wasn't on. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so I already have... <laughs> A whole bunch of orchard trees just waiting to go in the ground at our new property. When I say a whole bunch of orchard trees, guys, I'm talking a Martha Stewart size orchard here. <laughs> I'm kind of an obsessive uh, tree person. Like, I absolutely adore trees and I love fruit trees. Are you a tree hugger? No, I'm not a tree hugger per se. <laughs> but I can appreciate a good apple tree. Okay. So I can't even tell you off the top of my head how many of these trees I have. I know we have... Ten? Ten? Ten. How many did you buy? A lot. <laughs> my money's going. Ten? No. <laughs> Why? Why? I think eight apple trees. Six cherry trees. Six plum trees. And there's a whole bunch of different breeds. Wow. <laughs> Two persimmon trees. Four apricot trees. I got two pecan trees. I got a whole bunch of maple trees. 
We're buying a whole forest. Including a, a bunch of sugar maples for tapping syrup someday. And I got a whole bunch of elderberry bushes. I'm going to transplant some pawpaw trees for my dad's property over there. Because uh, he has like 20 pawpaw trees just wildly growing in his yard. Hmm. And also, I have a ton of flower seeds from Monticello itself. Oh, yeah. Yep, so they're... I did a ton of research, guys. Oh my gosh, I spent hours re researching this, but it's what I love to do. Monticello is the home of Thomas Jefferson. Yes. yes. Nobody knew that. Yes, and so Thomas Jefferson was fantastic about recording what was in his garden. So we know what kind of flowers and fruits and vegetables were in America in the 18th and early 19th centuries. So I did a ton of research about what he wrote down. I ordered a whole bunch of these seeds of everything from melons to cucumbers to tomatoes to herbs. The exact type of variety that he mentioned that he was growing in his yard. I also ordered a lot of seeds actually from Monticello itself. So all the flower seeds that I got are from Thomas Jefferson's garden in their 18th and early 19th century types that were in America during that time. So um, I'm planning on doing a lot more garden shots, but also showing you guys actual types of vegetables that they had back then. Now they had a whole bunch of very strange looking fruits and vegetables. Some of them you might recognize though. Some of them they still have to this day. My most favorite one to say is romaine lettuce. They had romaine lettuce even growing in Thomas Jefferson's garden, so there's nothing too exotic about romaine lettuce, you know? <laughs> but uh, they had red stock celery. They had a whole lot of cherry tomatoes, like yellow cherry tomatoes like and little red ones that were shaped like eggplants. I like the little tomatoes cut in half with like the vinegar and oil and spice yeah, for the salad. Yeah, a tomato salad tomato really salad. good. So we're going to do a lot more garden stuff, you know. It's going to take a while to make my dream come true. But stay tuned for that. Well, we're <laughs> our, not. our channel is only two years old, by the way. It just turned two roughly around this time. I remember my first video came out in early October. So <laughs> two years. I mean, two years ain't even that long. So happy birthday to Early American on YouTube. Thanks, because that's me. <laughs> and congratulations, we now have 750,000 followers on Early American. Thank you guys. Thank you everybody. Yeah, that's a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of friends. We're going to have 750,000 people come to our wedding? Better rent like a stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt <So>. it. <laughs> live, we'll have our own satellite, we'll live yeah. broadcast it. So the one thing I know for sure about the wedding is going to be a potluck. So you guys bring um, whatever your favorite dish is. Preferably, I think, a savory dish, just because everyone brings dessert, usually yeah. at potlucks, and then you end up having 50 desserts and two actual savory dishes. Maybe when we get closer, we'll uh, rig up some kind of an online list. So, of food? Yeah. Of food that you guys can cook and bring? So hmm. it'd be like uh, salad, rolls, hmm. Chicken, that's just an example. And Pies. we'll have like three people signed up for chicken. This oh. will be a lot of people. And then, okay, nobody signed up for bread yet. Oh, I like that. I'll take idea. bread. So we'll that's do something a good like that. Idea. Because that's the bad thing about potlucks, even mm -hmm. on a small scale. Everybody brings the same thing. Then it's like, okay, well, there's no whatever because everybody brought apple pie and there's no salad. <laughs> Where's the bread rolls? Everybody bought, brought butter, but there's no rolls for the butter. Or vice versa. I'll appreciate anything <laughs> that you guys bring. <laughs> but that list thing is not a bad idea. We might do it. And for those wondering if we're going to have a wedding registrar... Registry. Registry, because I've already had a couple people that have found out that we got engaged ask me about that. Bags of chicken feet. <laughs> um, maybe quilts. Flour and sugar. Flour, sacks of flour. Silver and gold. <laughs> <laughs> Gunpowder and lead. Gunpowder. <laughs> I'm serious, guys. Like, I don't know. Nah. <laughs> I really feel like you just coming to the wedding is a gift, yeah. honestly. Yeah, no, please no food processors. Yeah, our, please no our electric crock pots or <laughs> Roombas or whatever they are. <laughs> we're, we're trying to say authentic all the way it's hard but it's <laughs> you know 
we just we get so distracted with cell phones nowadays the more i can stay away from that mm -hmm. the more happier i am right you know the amish people they gotta be you know as happy as a a fat kid in a bakery or wherever you know candy store but i mean because they don't have any distractions of whether it's important stuff or not our cell phones they you know everything that happens on there turns out we think it's important where it, it might be or it might not be we need to just get away from it for a while yeah so Unplug. don't give us toaster just show up though seriously <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying to say uh yeah your friendship is the best gift you could give us yeah. i know it sounds cheesy but like okay cue the sad violin music but i grew up in a military family so my dad retired a colonel in the u.s military I was moving every single two years growing up. Every two years, on the dot. Sometimes three years, if I was lucky, but usually two. Because of that, I could never keep friends. You know, you grow close to people and then they leave. Mm -hmm. So growing up, I really <laughs> learned to appreciate what a friend means because I didn't have a long-term friend until I was an adult. I would have friends in high school, middle school, but then a year or two later, I wouldn't see them again which can be pretty devastating for someone growing up. So now I'm an adult, I think, and having you guys in my life has been so important to me and just being friends with you and you showing that you appreciate my friendship and I appreciate you, it means the world to me. So just show up at the wedding, that's all yep. I can say. Help us make a memory. Yeah, help us to make a memory, really. And we'll help you to make a memory too because it'll be a historic yeah. themed wedding. It'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. Ron wants it to be an 18th century themed wedding. So not early 19th. Because we also reenact Rev War stuff, like 1770, 1760-ish. Uh, so it'll be a Revolutionary War... Uh, it'll hit the fort. <laughs> yeah, themed wedding. Because the fort's from that time. Right. In terms of clothing, I mean. So if you're wondering yeah. what kind of clothes... Cause you, <laughs> Show up in period clothes, that'd be awesome, but if not, just show up in regular clothes. Show up whatever period. If you reenact World War II and yeah. want to dress up to come see us, wear it. <laughs> yeah, you might stand out a little bit, but... <laughs> well, so will all the people in modern clothes. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> They're all modern to us. Yeah. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, for your friendship, for everything. We're going to show you our journey in future videos about how we build the house. Please... <laughs> Be patient with us, you know, especially the very beginning yeah. parts of building a house. Not very exciting. And we're paying for it out of pocket, so yeah. it's going a little slower, so we have to save up our funds and right. then uh, be smart and yeah. work our butts off. I'm not even lying when I say we're broke. <laughs> we're <laughs> pretty broke. We, we do have one more thing to show them. Um, a, a really nice lady sent us some sugar nips. In our oh. last video, we showed the sugar... Or two, a couple yes. videos ago, we showed the sugar cone, and Candy also showed you guys how to make a sugar cone on Cabin Crafts. So, a, like I said, a kind lady sent us these antique sugar nips, so we're going to show you how they work. And on to a completely random subject. I mean, we're eating dessert, but... So show them how you would... Because remember, this is very oh. hard. Mm -hmm. This is a cone of sugar. In the 18th and early 19th centuries, and also the 17th and I think the 16th centuries, probably <laughs> sugar was shipped in cones, in these pyramid shapes. And all it is is a mixture of sugar and a little bit of water in order to make it rock hard. And you, it's so rock hard that you cannot just easily scrape it off or anything. I swear it will not work. Yeah. Um, I had... I'll show you. You can't use a grater. It don't work. It's, yeah, that's how hard it is. It'll dull your grater if you try to use a grater. It's cement. So how in the world did people get the sugar from this shape into the shape of the tart that we just ate, powdered <laughs> sugar? They had something called sugar nips. Actually, sugar nippers, but I like calling them sugar nips. So these are called sugar nippers. And these are actually pretty sharp right here. It's almost like two knives. And you're supposed to just pinch the sugar and pieces of it fall off. These ones that were sent to us, and I think they're actually genuinely old. I don't, these are not new. They've been repaired. Uh, there's a little bit of metal that's been welded on the side here. You can just tell it's full of craters and little pits. 
So these are actually antique sugar nippers and we've never tried them before. So we're gonna try them for the first time on camera because we, we can't afford sugar nippers. They're really expensive. And they came in different sizes too. These appear to be kind of small. Yeah, these ones I think are pretty small. But, but also the cones came in different sizes too. Yeah, I've never been able to afford one of these before. So thank you whoever mailed it to us. We really, really appreciate well, it. get the nipping. Okay, I'll get a nipping. So let's see, I've never tried it. Oh, oh. Get a smaller bite. It all, it, oh, it's working. It's making the sugar come off. It just takes a long time. It's working though. Yeah, those those tips are sharpened. Oh my gosh, it's working. And there's sugar going everywhere. It's snowing. <laughs> oh, the mice are coming out tonight. That's cool. Let me try. I want, okay. I want to play with them. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> let's do let's do it like this. Sit those down. Let's do this. My way was funnier. <laughs> that works too. Well, it's working seriously because that is concrete. Yeah. And it's still biting through them. Who knows the last time these things have been used since the 18th century? I don't know. All right, for the people who don't know. When you got this, these big clumps, they're still hard. You can't put this in your pie. What would you do? Would you use a mortar and pestle? Yeah, you to could do that. To finish the job? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So for the little, the bigger chunks like this, you have to pound them until they're fine. But if you just put this in a mortar and pestle, you'd be at it for probably 15 days because I mean, it's concrete. Right. But this little tiny piece here, you could pound it out much easier. It works. People back then weren't stupid. Who said that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody who watched the, uh, the the gun video that me and my dad did last week. Um, yeah. That was a fun one to do. And thank you for watching this video. Yeah, this video. Yeah, this video. So I think we're going to head out now. I think so, before she makes a bigger mess. Yeah, thank you for watching. And you stay tuned for the rest of our crazy videos that are coming out in the future. Because you know it's going to be wild with us getting land and everything now. So bye, guys. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.